Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am going to start with the next topic of FEM, weighted residue approach. There are two types of methods, one is called as non-weak form type method and the other is called as weak form type method. In non-weak form, there are five methods that we are going to study and in weak form type, there is only one method which is called as RR method. I will tell you the meaning of these terms when we go for solving of some numerical. For now, we will see some terminologies. There are various types of variables based on their classification. The first type is called as primary variable and secondary variable. Primary variable PV, the dependent variable in the differential equation is known as primary variable. You can see over here there is a differential equation which is shown. Y is the primary variable here because Y is nothing but the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. So, that is why y is called as the primary variable. Now, there is another term which is called as secondary variable, sv is a symbol which we generally use. The derivatives of the dependent variable are known as secondary variables. In the same example, dy by dx, the derivative of the primary variable is nothing but the secondary variable. So, this is one of the ways the variables are classified. Next, we have something which is called as essential boundary condition, which is called as EBC. The boundary conditions associated with the primary variable are known as EBCs. For example, you can see this differential equation. This is the domain of the differential equation from 0 to 1 for the independent variable. You can see there are two boundary conditions given over here. The first one is called as an EBC because it is a boundary condition which is associated with the primary variable. Now, when you look at the second boundary condition, you can see that this is related with the derivative of the primary variable. So, such kind of boundary conditions are called as natural boundary conditions. It is written here, the boundary conditions associated with the secondary variable are known as natural boundary conditions. So, this is the example which I just showed you. Next is another boundary condition definition and it is based on the primary and secondary variable again. The first one is called as Dirichlet boundary condition. When you have a differential equation given and the boundary conditions are of this sort, which means they are only containing the primary variables, then it is called as Dirichlet boundary condition. When you have a particular differential equation given and the boundary conditions are like these, they are only for secondary variables. So, that is called as Newman boundary condition and Newton boundary condition is another type wherein you have mixed boundary conditions. For example, these two, you have an EBC and an NBC as the boundary condition. So, that is called as Newton boundary condition. Next, we will talk about certain methods. There are certain rules you can say for solving of the non-weak type and the weak type of FEM problem. When it is not possible to solve a differential equation by regular mathematical methods, numerical methods are used. This is something which I have discussed before itself. For solving a differential equation by numerical method, an approximate solution is to be assumed and the error has to be minimized. So, this is what we are doing in this chapter. A polynomial can be assumed as an approximate solution to the differential equation which means I can assume a polynomial as an approximate solution for given differential equation. For choosing a polynomial, the solution will be of this sort. If you understand this, here I have taken y is equal to summation of 1 to n, which means number of iterations or parameters will be from 1 to n. Okay, this is not i, this is j. So, j is from 1 to n. I have cj, this phi of x is a function of x. j here is going to take numbers from 1 to n. Now, when I say c is 1, phi is 1, so that is first term, so it can be something like this, c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 plus c3 phi 3 and this will continue. Now, when I talk about c1, c2, c3, you can see these are some constants which I am going to determine using certain methods and when I talk about these phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, these are functions of x. 
Now, when I say function of x, it can be simply x square, x cube, x raised to 4 and anything like that. Okay. So, when we solve the numerical, I will show you more in depth about this. For now, you need to understand that the degree of this assumed polynomial should be one more than the order of the given differential equation. So, suppose if your differential equation has order 2, then you will assume the degree of this polynomial as 2 plus 1, 3. The polynomial assumed should satisfy all the boundary conditions given in the problem. This is something very obvious. Since solution assumed is an approximate one, now this is very important, we are assuming an approximate solution. That is why we are talking about FEM, that is finite element method or finite element analysis as the subject goes, wherein you assume the solution, you solve it, you get some answers and then you need to compare with the exact solution because you are not going to get the precise answers over here. So when I have assumed that the solution is an approximate one, obviously I cannot say the differential equation like this is equal to 0. For example, if I say y is equal to k sin x is the solution, is an assumed solution. Now, this is of trigonometric type. I am talking about more of polynomial type algebraic equations is what we are going to use. But suppose if I have a polynomial like this, I, if I substitute over here, I should not get LHS equal to RHS, which means RHS is 0. So, I should not get the value of LHS as 0. I should get some number as a residual error in the system. So, that is what is written here. Since solution assumed is an approximate one, hence LHS will not be equal to RHS. So, the LHS will be equal to some other number and that number here is termed as R which is called as residue. Now, when there is an error in the system, it needs to be rectified. For that, there is something which is called as weighted integral form. Now, weighted integral form is written like this. This is integration in the domain which is given in the question. So, this is integration. And here I have written wi into r. r is this residue and wi is this weight function. Now, weight function basically means when I solve a numerical, there is some residue error in the system. To reduce it, we attach a function such that the error is reduced and you get more accurate answers. Now, when I talk about ANSYS software, there what you do is to reduce the amount of error in the system you are going to divide the system into more number of elements and node so that your solution becomes more accurate. You will have better meshing options. For example, you will not take up coarse mesh. Coarse, I have already told you, is something like this, a bigger mesh. You will go for something like these, finer meshes, so that you basically zoom into the you know, area and you are getting more better answers. So, the weight function in ANSYS when I talk about, obviously these are the equations which are at the back end of ANSYS uh, and they are basically used to have better meshing options. So, here I have W is a weight function and I is the number of parameters to be calculated. Now, when I say parameters to be calculated, it means this is my assumed polynomial and these are the parameters C1, C2, C3. So, depending on how many unknown you have, you will have to take those many number of iterations I. There are different methods to solve a differential equation by numerical method. Each of these methods is determined by the choice of a distinct weight function. Now, that is something obvious. Each weight function is going to be different for different method. So, the first method is called as subdomain, wherein the weight function is assumed as 1. In Galerkin, weight function is taken as coefficient of ci. i is the iteration number. So, it could be c1 in y, c2 in y, whatever coefficient is there, x square, x cube, x minus 1, x minus 4, that is the coefficient for Galerkit method. There is another method which is given by petrov galerkit both of them. Here we assume any algebraic polynomial, for example, x square, x cube as a weight function and you can take more higher order terms. Then the next method is least square. In least square, the derivative of residue is taken with respect to the unknown coefficient. Next method is collocation. This method is very distinct because here the residue is assumed to be 0 at any point in the domain. So, in the domain that is given to me, say 0 to 1, 0 to 5, whatever is the domain. In that domain, you can assume at any point x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it is in the domain and say the residue at that point is 0. 
so that is the way collocation method works and the last method that we are going to see here is the relay rates method rr method is also the name for it in rr method we are going to use coefficient of ci in y it is something like the galakin method itself now you need to note that here 1 to 5 these are non weak form type and the sixth method is called as weak form type method now why it is called so i will tell you when we solve numericals because you will get a better understanding at that time so with this i end the session i hope you have understood the basics of fem and why the chapter is called as weighted residue approach because here we have a weight function we have a residue term and that is the approach of solving the numerical see you in the next session with some numerical thank you mm -hmm.